Hi guys. So this movie just came out called The Shack, right? I think, uh, I mean, the, the trailer looks just brilliant. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it. I haven't seen it yet, but I just wanted to talk about my experience with the book. Um, it, it really rocked my world. It changed my life. It was a turning point, one of the many turning points that and God used this book to do it. I think uh, he's really proud of William Paul Young, the guy who wrote it. And he's just like, that's my boy. I am going to promote the heck out of this. You know, God is behind it, you know. And I think um, those who fight against it will find themselves to be on the wrong side of this argument. But you know what? God uses Percy to promote the good news. Persecution. <laughs> so... That's, it's all part of the it's all part of the grand plan the grand scheme so um, it doesn't mean I have to like it <laughs> the persecution that is I I mean I suppose I'd get persecuted for um, putting a plug in for the shack right so here's the thing um, my experience of it I thought it was just brilliant I'm like oh my gosh this is just saturated and dripping with this God who is loving and kind and actually wants a relationship with us. You know, and like, wow, it was, it was just a stark difference to a lot of the religion I was used to growing up in, you know, um, no, no, through no fault, you know, I'm not blaming anyone, whatever. It's just, there's this mass, uh, misconception of who God is, you know, and, and that's an important question. Who is God? Right. Will the, will the real Jesus please stand up? You know, like <laughs> for real. Because uh, honestly, we don't want to be deceived, right? And this is why we kind of live in fear and like, uh, you know, we ha we need to hammer it out, right? But here's the brilliant thing about it. Hammering it out means we discover this Jesus who is love, who is just Mr. Love himself and just dripping and saturated with just, ah, just so much love for you and wants a relationship, like actually wants to hang out with you every day and, and be your best friend, be your very best friend. So that's the picture the, the, the movie, well, the book paints, right? And so he uses very non-religious um, ways to express that, you know, through like uh, an elderly woman with, uh, with uh, who happens to have more melanin in her skin, right? That's the only, only difference between the races anyway, right? Um, shade of melanin, right? like a DC Talk song used to say. But I, I just think that's brilliant because is God male or female for real? Like he gives us, okay, so he gives us father, right? That's the, the main image. But he's neither male nor female. Like he made man in his image, male and female. He created them in his image, right? Male and female. The yin and the yang. <laughs> Not sure why I threw that in there, but... Um, actually, there is something really profound I once read about the yin and yang, and it has to do with Som Song of Solomon and like the balance between, uh, the, yeah, it's just brilliant. So there's something to that. Um, back to point though, cause I get distracted easily. My wife usually is, you know, if we're in a concert setting, she's reins me in, whatever, back to point. I have no idea where I'm right now, but, um, the shack. Oh yeah, my experience of the shack was, I'm reading it, I'm just like experiencing this, this beautiful God I want to get to know. I'm like, oh, gosh, how, did, how come I never saw you like this in scripture? Well, because, you know, as Paul Young explains it, our paradigm frames the, what we read in scripture, you know? And so if we have a wrong paradigm, we're going to see the wrong Jesus. We're going to see the wrong God, you know, jumping off the pages. Um, but if we're able to see the right one, the scriptures will come alive to us. And they have for me you know, over the years. It's just been brilliant. So at one point in the book, I got kind of upset, angry, because it was revealing something of uh, my own relationship with my father. There was a scene. I, d I didn't remember the details of it or like what the point of it was. Maybe it was just thrown in there just for me, but uh, it was a scene between a, a son and a father reconciling, you know? Um, it was weird, this courtroom thing going on too, you know? So, in that scene, 
my heart was just laid bare with my, my relationship with my father. Like we had been estranged for a couple of years. Like I hadn't spoken to him intentionally, just not called him, whatever. I'm just like, okay, I'm done. I, I, can't, I was bitter in my heart because I blamed him for the divorce my parents went through and had a lot of pain in my heart. And the rejection, you know, he rejected, he rejected his family, you know, when, when the whole divorce happened, you know. And I, I, I felt severely rejected myself. So here's what happened. I, I read that part. I'm like, I got angry. I threw the book across the room, you know, later to pick it up and read the rest of it. But a few days after that, I have one of the most profound experiences of the love of God that I ever have had in my life. All right. Um, this, is, this is what happened. I had a dream in which there's my father, my, my dad, standing there. And actually, my brother was there too. I was standing out to the side. And I had this this awareness, like, we're one. We're like, we're like one. That was what came to me, okay? And I understood that. And then God was there, and he, he started like, hey, you want to see how much I love your dad? And he just started revealing it to me. And it's just like this love just started pouring into my heart. And it just got more and more and more intense. And I'm like, oh my gosh, does this love have any ending at all? I just... I was utterly convinced if I experienced one more drop of this love, I was going to explode into a million pieces. You know, I thought it was going to kill me. So I, I actually shook myself awake out of this dream. I'm like, no more, I can't take it. And it was just, it was just so intense. I'm just like, wow. And he loves every single one of us like that. Like, wow. Okay, so needless to say, it healed my relationship with my dad. I forgave him completely all wrongs, you know, under the blood of Jesus, right? Uh, you know, and I've treated him with love and respect ever since. It healed our relationship. And that's not to say that we can, couldn't have a better relationship. I mean, it, relationships take work, don't they? You know, with, with God and with, with each other. We need to spend the time. We need to invest the love into those relationships to really make them work. So... I pray that you do that. I pray that you experience a lot of healing in your broken, fractured relationships when you realize how much Jesus loves them. You know how much grace he has. You know, the, the profound scandal of the book, The Shack, is that here God is extending his love ultimately to a man who kidnapped and murdered a, a, a young girl and did whatever else, you know. This is unthinkable. And yet God is extending love to that person for real, you know? It makes me think of all the, the, the wonderful trophies of grace throughout history. You know, the guy who penned Amazing Grace, for instance. You know, he uh, was a slave trader, you know, raping women and d doing beastly things. And yet, God revealed his grace to him. God saved him. And he was just a broken man at the end of his days. You know, just like, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me, you know. And I think about the Apostle Paul who murdered Christians, who hunted Christians to the death um, because he thought he was serving God. You know, Jesus said, the days will come when, they, when people who kill you, my followers, will think that they're offering God a service. And that's exactly what Paul thought. He's doing a favor... Uh, of God by ridding the earth of these, the this false sect, this this uh, unthinkable cult, you know, that's that's springing up out of Judaism, you know, and this false Christ, you know, Jesus, whatever. So they thought, right? So, you know, and I think about other cases too, even modern cases like uh, Jeffrey Dahmer. He found the grace of God, you know, and was saved in a jail cell before a fellow inmate stabbed him to death, okay? He's in heaven, you know, even after the atrocities he committed. God loves the worst of us. And it says in the Bible, where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. You know, he wants to save the pedophiles and and the, the porn stars and anybody that you can, you know, the, the religious bigots. He wants to save them too. <laughs> you know, whoever you can think of that's like, Beyond the grace of God, no. Where sin abounds, grace much more abounds, much more abounds. 
oh my gosh, he's got so much love. Mercy triumphs over judgment. And that's the, the message of, of this movie, you know, The Shack, the book, The Shack. I'd recommend it to anybody and his other three books. Well, other two books. He's got a book called Crossroads and Eve. Now, I am not saying that any one of these books isn't without some error or whatever, because God uses flawed vessels, you know, in his kingdom work. I'm a flawed vessel. He uses me in his kingdom work. He, he uses you in, the, in his kingdom work, you know, no matter how flawed you are. So, yeah, we make mistakes. You know, I, I located one or two of them in each of those books where I'm like, oh. But you know what? On the whole, it's good. It's good. And it's saturated with, with and anointed, I believe, by the Spirit of God, you know, and the grace of God. So, yeah, check it out. Let me know in the comments what you think of the movie, because you're going to go see it, right? The Shack. All right, just came in theaters on March 3rd here, so a few days ago, or whenever you're watching this. It's like, okay, it's out, right? All right, so take care, everybody. God bless you. Keep pursuing Jesus, loving him with all your heart, and loving one another. That's our job. You know what? First and foremost, our job is to receive the love of Jesus. Receive that love, that infinite love uh, that he has for you. He loves you so immensely, so intensely. I just want to end with a prayer. Let's just pray. I'm going to pray a blessing for you and just to receive the love of Jesus, all right? So, uh, Lord, Heavenly Jesus, Lord, Heavenly Jesus, pour out your love. Lord, you are pouring out your love. You have, you can't help it. You're just love, right? You're just, you're always just love, pouring it out upon us. Well, I pray that we would just begin to see it and that we would receive it, Lord. Help us to just every day, just wake up in the morning like, Lord, I receive your love. I'm opening my heart to you, Jesus. Come on in. Let's share today together. You know, uh, the Lord Jesus wants to wants to share life with you. He wants to share his love with you. And it'll change your world. You'll become the love that this world needs only, only when you receive that love well. Because the Lord says, uh, we love because he first loved us. That's what it says in Scripture in 1 John 4. 1 John 4 is brilliant, by the way. It says, God is love, and there is no fear in love, for his perfect love casts out, drives out all fear, because fear has to do with punishment. And Jesus has taken away the punishment, hasn't he? That's what the cross was all about. You know? So, read your Bibles with that, with that awareness that God is love. See his love just dripping off the, the pages and just marinate yourself in the love of Jesus and in his word of love, the scriptures, the holy scriptures, which Jesus honors, so you should honor too. So spend some time with the Lord, all right? Spend some time just marinating in his love for you. Amen. So God bless you. Have a great day.